Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video containing everything you need to know about factor data type in R. Now, there really isn't too much, so I'm hoping this ends up being a short video, uh, but you know that I like to talk, so hopefully it won't get too long. Basically, uh, factor is just a fancy type of a character data type, and primarily used when you have a vector containing that character or now factor. Uh, this occurs often when you have data sets you're working on and one of your columns is a character column type. And so the factor vector comes up quite a lot. So we're gonna start with the character vector. If you haven't seen my video about data types, uh, hopefully I'll put a card up here or something uh, and you should check that video out. Um, but here's just an example character vector. So here, this one has, it's a character vector for one thing, it's type uh, character and has length three, and the three elements are my awesome vector. Now it's not a very interesting character vector, it won't make for a very interesting factor vector either, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a slightly more complicated one that just has some repeats, because that's when the factor uh, vector actually gets some usage. Now the code to do that is a little bit uh, more than we need, uh, and probably if you're following on the playlist, this is the first time you've seen this kind of code. Uh, the key here is actually in line 11. This sample function is just going to allow us to pull out elements of this vector A that we just created randomly, uh, and it's gonna create a vector of length 10. Uh, it's going to sample the elements in the original vector A, that is my awesome vector, uh, with replacements. That means we could have duplicates in our new vector, uh, and it's gonna do that with a certain probability. In this case, I did 0.5 for the first, 0.3 for the second, 0.2 for the last. That's not really that important. The other line, here in line 10, is this set.seed command, and that just makes sure that the whole process I'm using here is reproducible. So that if you run your code, you'll get exactly the same results as I'm getting here, and you won't be confused about why does my vector look differently from yours. And so here we go. So we're just gonna create a new vector by running lines 10 and 11. And we can take a look at that vector right here. You can see that it has uh, elements here. The first element is vector, then awesome, my, awesome, my, awesome, my, vector, my, my. Okay, so you see those repeats that I was talking about before. It's still a character vector. It has length 10, as I said, that sample line would produce. Um, and so now we have a slightly more interesting character vector. So what can we do with it? Well, um, one function that you often use in R is called the summary function. And generally this function works on a lot of different types of objects and gives you something informative. It turns out for character vectors, it's crazy not informative. I don't know, if somebody in the comments can tell me why this doesn't default to do the next thing, which is doing the table function, which actually provides some meaningful information other than the length and the type of the object. In this case, it tells me that in my vector, there were three occurrences of the word awesome, five of the word my, and two of the word vector. So it's slightly more interesting. Um, okay, so that is an example of a character vector, just as a reminder what that looks like. Uh, as you print it out, this is what it looks like. Now let's take that character vector and turn it into a factor vector. Uh, we're gonna do that using the as.factor function. Alternatively, and you'll see in a moment, you could have used the factor function. So here, uh, we just turned it into a factor vector. So now if you ask what class it is, well, it's a factor. And if you ask what length it is, it's still length 10. If you do summary, now you get something informative. It tells you, like we saw before, Three occurrences, awesome. Five of my and two of vector. If you do table, you get exactly the same output. Now, if you just print out this factor vector, it looks slightly different. Just as a reminder, this is what it looked like if you had your character vector printed out. So the first thing you'll notice is there are no longer these double quotes floating everywhere, right? In the factor vector print out, right, it has removed all of those quotes and it makes it a little bit more succinct to read, I think. The second thing you should notice is that when you print out the factor vector, there's an extra line here at the bottom. And that line tells you levels, in this case, awesome, my, and vector. So what is going on there? Well, what is going on there relates to the internal representation of a factor vector in R, right? So right here, as we print it out, it doesn't look like there's anything amiss, but in fact, what's happening in R is that you have two pieces, you basically have the uh, numeric representation of the factor, and then you have a lookup table to extract 
the levels of that factor. So here's what I'll tell you what I mean. So the first thing is that we're going to look up or find what the levels are for that factor vector. And the levels are awesome, my, and vector. Okay, and now if we look, use this as that numeric function on this factor vector, it will tell us three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, two, two. Okay, and the way that this works in R is that this three right here means that the first element in this vector is the third level, the third level's vector. So that's why here, maybe I should have put right here, right? We have vector as the first element. Now the second element in the vector is the first level, that's awesome, that's why we have awesome, and so forth. So two represents my, so that's why we have three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, what, two, two, okay. Now that's very different from the character vector, right? So if we try to do this as that numeric bit on our character vector, I need to change that code, right? Nothing happens, we get gibberish, right? And A here stands for not available, meaning uh, really R didn't know what to do if you're trying to take this character vector and making it numeric. All right, so the key here is that a factor vector has an internal representation by numbers uh, and a lookup table here for the levels associated with the, the numeric quantities. Um, because you have these levels, uh, you actually have the uh, ability as the programmer to decide what order you want those levels to be in. So the default here for the levels was that it's in alphabetical order. So A becomes before M, M becomes M comes before V, and so that was sort of the default ordering that R uses, but you could do whatever ordering you want. I'm going to redo the orders here by using the levels argument in the factor function. And again, we could have used factor in lieu of as that factor to construct the factor. Using the levels argument allows us to determine what order the levels come in, and I decided I want my awesome vector in that order. So this is our new factor vector. The new levels are my awesome and vector, as opposed to awesome my vector. Now I have a question for those of you who are watching the video. Uh, if you like to use factors and you have used the other arguments before, there's a bunch of them. Right, so here's the help file for factor. There's labels, exclude, ordered, and max. Uh, I basically never use the other uh, arguments, so if you have a good use case for them, let me know. I know that I've tried to use the ordered one in the past, and that just seemed to mess up everything I was doing downstream, so I've stayed clear of that. Um, all right, so now a factor vector is just sort of this fancy character vector, and so you can access and modify elements just like you can in a character vector. So as an example, here's my factor vector. I'm pulling out the second element. The second element is awesome, right? And every time you print something out from this factor vector, it will tell you what the levels are, okay? And that's different than what the character vector does. So now we can also try to modify elements in the factor vector, but if we try a new level, things are not gonna work. So you'll notice here the levels are awesome, my and vector. I try to change the second element to not so awesome, and I get a warning message. And if I take a look at what that factor vector now looks like, you'll see here that it has this NA, right, for not available. So uh, something went awry as we were trying to change the second element into this not so awesome level. Uh, if you try to do that with the character vector, it's no problem. There it is, no problem. If you take a look at what it looks like, whoops, capitalization does matter in R, right? You'll see that the second element has been changed to not so awesome, okay? Um, and so the key here is that there's some control that R exerts over factor variables so that you cannot add a new level just by assigning into the, the factor vector. So if you want to assign a new level, what you should do is you should update the allowed levels of that factor vector. So here we're going to change the levels that are allowed and what we're going to do is we're going to include all the levels that already exist and then we're going to add this not so awesome as a possible level for this factor variable. And so now if you take a look at what levels looks like, right, now we have awesome, my, vector, and not so awesome. Now we are allowed to add in this new value into the factor vector. And here we go, not so awesome. Now, um, if you do 
look at factor vectors that are like this that have some uh, levels that have spaces in it, you can see that this output is not really so helpful. It's a little bit unclear here how many levels there are. Is there one, two, three, four, five, six, or something else? Uh, and so you'll have to, to go back to using the levels function, which tells you that the four levels are awesome my vector and not so awesome. Um, okay, the last thing I wanna cover with factors, and this is really sort of a more advanced topic and it gets into when you're actually using factor vectors in analyses, uh, oftentimes you want to change which factor level comes first. Um, and regression models, this is gonna be called a reference level. Uh, usually it corresponds to a control level in whatever it is that you're studying. And you could do it by going up here and changing the levels, but then you have to type out all of the levels somehow. Okay, and so we're going to use a different function. The function we're gonna use here is the re-level function. And that will allow us to move one of the levels forward to the front. So here, if we look at our factor vector currently, awesome is in the first spot, and then it goes my vector and not so awesome. Uh, if we look at the summary, right, they're still in that order. Now we are going to change, and we're going to move not so awesome up to the front. Okay, not so awesome, here we go. So there's still only one value of not so awesome, but it's now been moved to the front. If we looked at the levels of this new updated factor vector, that one has been moved to the front spot. And again, this is often used in uh, more advanced statistical analyses like uh, regression models. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's everything you need to know about factor variables. If you think there's something critical that I've missed, you know, I encourage you to write a comment down below and let me know what I should have talked about that I didn't. Um, if you like this video, I appreciate a, a like button. If you would like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe and subscribe to notifications. Until next time, hope you have a great one.